Hey everyone, it's Brandon from TopTenGamer.com and today I'm coming at you with a look at a $700 and $800 gaming PC. That's right, both of them. And I want to talk about a few things with you. I want to talk about uh, DDR4, where that's going, whether you're going to really see that next year or not, uh, what it's compatible with uh, that versus DDR3. I want to talk about uh, Broadwell and Skylake and what you're going to see there in the upcoming year. And I want to talk about parts, parts, and more parts because this is the month that I really like to buy uh, whatever is on sale and whatever is at a good price. I've already bought a uh, Fractal R4 case. Uh, I've bought a few different uh, sticks of RAM here, a couple hard drives, solid states, power supplies. You know, I just kind of pick up whatever I can find that I can see is a really, really good deal and then uh, try to use it for the rest of the year. So. Anyway, you might be in the same category I am. If you are, get out there and find some good deals. But today we're gonna showcase a $700 and $800 gaming PC that uh, really doesn't include these prices, but just includes standard prices. Because I think when January comes, this is gonna be more of a January 2015 build because when January comes, uh, you're not gonna really see these kind of prices. So anyway, Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can put together a great build at a budget price. Here we go. Before we get to the build, I want to talk about my thoughts on DDR4 because a few of you have been curious about that. Uh, first thing on DDR4 is it's, it's expensive and it's not going to really increase your in-game FPS. Uh, not only that, it's not going to be compatible with 1150 motherboards, obviously not with AM3 Plus motherboards because there really are no new AM3 Plus motherboards. So. What is DDR4 compatible with? Well, it's compatible with your X99 enthusiast motherboards, and it's gonna be compatible with not Broadwell, the next generation of Intel processors, but Skylake, the one after that. So we're gonna be using DDR3 for a little bit longer, and that's perfectly fine because again, it's not gonna increase your in-game FPS. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about Broadwell and Skylake. It looks like Broadwell is gonna be coming out around quarter two of 2015, around that time. Hey, what kind of performance boost are you gonna get from that? Not that much, uh, especially because you're gonna be using your own dedicated graphics card as a gamer. You're not gonna see much of a performance boost. What you will see is a lower TDP. Processors using uh, less wattage. It's a 65 watt TDP uh, processor series. Right now you can't actually get that with Haswell and like the 4690S, uh, a processor I'm looking at right now for a low energy build. But uh, anyway, kind of cool that they're just as fast or faster, gonna have better integrated graphics and use less power. So, but is it gonna be that appealing to, you know, gamers? Probably not. I think most gamers are gonna wait for Skylake. Skylake is the uh, sixth generation processor, or maybe it's its new family, I can't quite remember. But uh, Skylake looks like it's gonna be a worthwhile upgrade uh, in terms of performance. Uh, and in terms of being able to get a new motherboard that will be DDR4 compatible if you want to go that direction. Okay, so I guess the question is what do you want to do then? What, what's the next move if you've got to build a computer? Well, I kind of say build a computer because you're not going to get much from Broadwell, which is the next release, and they're kind of saying Skylake might re release around the same time, but you don't really know. So hey, if you can get a really good price on a, on a computer right now, build a computer, then why not? I just I just uh, can't see any harm in that. You either do it right now or probably skip Broadwell and then, uh, and then wait for Skylake altogether. It really depends on what kind of computer you have right now. Okay, let's take a look at the $700 build. It's gonna feature the i5-4590, not the 4690, which is the Haswell refresh, but the 4590, because it's about $30 cheaper today. The 4690K, which is your unlocked version of the Haswell refresh, is actually about $30 more. So you can choose whether or not you wanna use that. If you're not gonna plan on overclocking, then the 4590 really kinda of seems like the deal because you're not gonna get $30 more out of the 4690. The 4590 does a fine job, it goes from 3.3 to 3.7 gigahertz in turbo, and it's really not gonna slow you down in games. Now, in terms of our graphics card, for the $700 build, we're gonna go with the R9 280. Pretty stellar graphics card, definitely would put it above the GTX 760, and it comes in below the GTX 760's price, about $20 to $40 less than the GTX 760, with, again, higher performance. Now, it's not gonna be G-Sync compatible. It won't have uh, some of the NVIDIA technologies that are out there. However, you're gonna get just as good or better performance in uh, games across the board. Okay, on to the rest of the parts for this build. 
Uh, again, we have the i5-4590 and the uh, R9-280 for the exact models. You can look in the description below. I'll put them in the write-up so you can go check those out. Um, for motherboard, we are going with the Z97 board from Gigabyte. Uh, it's the D3H. And for the RAM, we're going to go with 8 gigabytes of G-Skill Rip Jaws. I was able to find this for as little as $54 during the holidays. Now, you probably won't find that price again, but maybe if you keep looking this month, you'll find it. But uh, if you can find it in the $60 to $65 range, you've still got a really good deal. Um, in terms of case, I like the Antec 300. If you get it right now, Newegg has a deal that after rebate puts it at $35. This is a $50, $50 $58 case, no doubt. So really good deal. If you don't get it in time, check out the Corsair Carbide 200R, which also regularly goes on sale, as well as the Elite 430 to try, and try to find something in that $35 to $40 price range. In terms of power supply, I like the EVGA 600 watt 80 plus. It's on rebate this month. Uh, it's cheap, 80 plus, and from a reliable manufacturer. That's really all you can hope for in this $700 price range. I wouldn't consider this power supply or the power supply that we use in our $800 PC, even tier two power supplies, uh, maybe in that tier three range. But you know what? You're still getting a rock solid product that's gonna last you a long time. Uh, these are typically the products I go with just because in terms of value, you, uh, you get a lot of it when you go with a power supply like that. Uh, hard drive, I'm gonna go with the standard Western Digital Caviar Blue Drive. Uh, solid state drives, uh, all the solid state drives are like half off this month. If you are looking for a solid state drive, they're still on sale. I was able to get uh, a 256 gigabyte uh, MX100 for, I think it was well under 100 bucks. So uh, that's pretty much a steal compared to where it was just in November. So if you need a solid state drive, it's not built into the price of this build, but something to consider for sure. Okay, for the $800 gaming PC, there's not a ton of changes as you can see, but we're gonna change the case out. The NZXT 410 is $60 on Newegg this month after rebate. That's a $100 case, so you're getting a really good deal there. Power supply, gonna go with a little more wattage, a little better, uh, more reliable uh, power supply in my opinion. And the Corsair CX 750, one of the more popular power supplies out there. It's not one, uh, again, that uh, has like Japanese capacitors or will last you like 15 years, but it should last you until you're really ready to build another PC again. So strong warranty, strong product from a reliable manufacturer. Uh, in terms of graphics card, we're going with the Sapphire uh, Radeon R9 280X, which uh, competes strongly against the GTX 770 and costs uh, up to $100 less. So, you know, if you have to have uh, G-Sync compatibility, then you'll probably go with something like the 760, which, which is kind of in the same price range here, which doesn't compete in terms of performance, but you know, AMD cards have been on sale this month. I'm sure that that will change next month. So uh, if you're willing to go with an AMD card, you can get uh, amazing price uh, per performance uh, going with something like the R9 280X. Okay, so final thoughts on this build. Uh, pretty darn good. It's amazing what you can get for the price during 2014 heading into 2015. Again, I meant this to be a 2015 build because uh, I wanted the prices to reflect kind of what you're gonna see going forward into 2015. If you were able to make this during December, you probably saved yourself a good uh, 10 to 20%. Uh, I was able to build this uh, $700 computer for around $600 just a few weeks ago. But maybe, just maybe between now and the end of the year, there'll be a deal out there where you can find a similar price. Hopefully you guys have learned something from this and I think I have and that is buy from uh, Black Friday week to Cyber Monday and uh, everything you want in terms of your PC and after that you're not going to get as good of a price. So hope you like guys like this build. If you did let me know. Press that like button. Press that subscribe button. Also you can ask me any question by going to the comment section below. You can also go to facebook.com slash top 10 gamer to ask me a PC question or a weather related question, whatever you wanna do, uh, get to know each other, just send me a line over there. Anyway, hopefully you like this video and we'll see you next time.